Why do we even bother? One day everything will cease to exist. Every good deed, every building built, every relationship had, everything. Even the longest living black holes will eventually die out. So again, I ask, why do we even bother? This is the question that haunts not just me, but everyone. You can hide from it, ignore it, whatever you want. But at some point, the question will dawn on you. This thought can quickly destroy any motivation that could have been or was. And I know this because I've experienced it myself. And that's why my goal is to, by the end of this video, be able to satisfy this question for myself and provide different answers that will hopefully satisfy you as well. That way we no longer have to live with the burden of this thought. This entire video is going to be very philosophical and while I love philosophy, it can also be a never ending spiral of questions, never leading to explanation, and our goal is to find or create answers. The first possible answer, I believe, is the most universally acceptable. I won't lean on things like religion or spirituality, at least that I know of. Answer 1. The Moment Look around you. What do you see, smell, taste, feel? These are all we know for certain. This is our reality. Nothing else exists but this moment. Nothing else exists except for you watching this video. This of everything we know, this is the only thing we can say is 100% real and exists. Everything else, whether it be the future or the past, has some level of speculation. Some speculation can be supported and may be close to 100% accurate, but we don't actually know 100% for sure about anything that involves the future or past. But this moment is the only thing that we can say is real, and that's because of our senses. I'll put a bit of a disclaimer that arguments can be made for just about anything, and that's kind of how philosophy works. The argument that this moment isn't even real or is just some type of illusion could be true. But for the sake of time and the purpose of this video, I want to make the assumption that we can trust our senses that tell us what we perceive is real. But why does having the certainty that this is the only moment matter? It matters because this moment is one that's worth fighting for. Living, breathing, being alive, knowing that you can do things now to increase the odds of a happier future, of positive moments that will eventually become the present. These moments are going to be more worth working towards, whether that's a future with possible kids, being financially secure, being able to travel, being able to spend time around the people you care about. These goals are what we should live for, and this is why we bother. Although this moment of watching this video may not be the most exciting, you are investing in fixing what may be, like me, a pessimist mind, turning it to a more optimistic mind, which will have phenomenal effects. But that's life. Not every moment is going to be fun, happy, exciting, or whatever positive emotion you can think of. But that also means that not every moment is going to be pain, suffering, sorrow, or whatever negative emotion you can think of. When you go on a roller coaster and you have the exciting anticipation of the slow ride up to the eventual drop, and go down the drop and scream with joy as the roller coaster takes you around at high speeds, you want to get off of the roller coaster at points that are slower or perhaps the loop de loop that makes you sick? Possibly, and that's what we're trying to fix. But for most, they ride out the boring or nauseating parts of the ride for the fun parts, because the positive moments make everything else worth it. This is life. In life, these moments can make you feel euphoric, thinking this is what life is about. But that also means that the nauseating moments may make you feel as though this is all life is, and as though it's never ending. Sometimes we have a hard time putting life in perspective and taking the good with the bad, because when we go through the bad, sometimes it can feel like there is no good, and this is because we as humans have awful foresight at times. It's almost like our render distance is turned down so we can't see the rest of the roller coaster that is life, meaning we aren't sure what is to come and when it will come. This is when you have to push through, this is when you need optimism. And I get it, as someone who tends to be more pessimistic, sometimes choosing optimism can feel like you're lying to yourself or being naive. But realistically, you don't often know for sure. I can choose to be pessimistic about my YouTube channel and say it will never grow, lead to worse quality and less videos, which could eventually lead to me quitting. Or I can be optimistic and say that as long as I keep improving, keep working hard, then I'll eventually see the results, which will lead to me making even higher quality videos than I am now, more frequently, meaning I'll have higher odds of actually succeeding. Optimism and pessimism are a choice. You have a say in which you subscribe to. If you look at my YouTube banner, there's an Uncle Iroh quote from Avatar that says, if you search for darkness, that is all you will ever see. I chose this quote because I was, and still sometimes do, struggle with pessimism, allowing it to consume me. But this quote is a reminder that you have a choice in which you pick, which means we can reverse the quote into, if you search for light, that is all you will ever see. If you choose to just look at the good, you will find good, and if you choose to just look at the bad, you will only find bad. The truth is that both people are equally naive, but so often being naive in the pursuit of good is far more shame than being naive in the pursuit of bad. This doesn't mean you have to pick your poison either. Although I'll be honest and say I don't know for certain, I do think the answer lies somewhere in the middle. Being aware of the good and the bad, knowing when to focus on the good and knowing when to respect and handle the bad. This method will make sure that you don't become ignorant of problems in the world, but also so you don't spiral into despair. 
I believe by using this method, you will find that there are more things to be happy about than sad. But yet again, I'll preface that if you seek out darkness, you'll find it. You have to learn to be objective. Answer 2. Non-standard religion slash spirituality. But the second answer, I want to look more into non-standard spiritual or religious beliefs, as well as do some fun speculation and challenge you to put your current beliefs on hold for the sake of this exercise. Let's say you died right now and everything we thought we knew about the afterlife was wrong. All religious texts, all prophecies, all of it. Instead, we get an afterlife that had no proof, perhaps run by a god or an entity that didn't hint at its existence at all. In this afterlife, you're going to be judged for the life you lived. And no, I'm not referring to Christianity as there are various beliefs as to what gets you into the various realms of the afterlife, be it heaven or hell. If you lived a bad life, a selfish life, a careless life, you are sent to some sort of place of punishment. And if you do the opposite and live a good life, a selfless life, a caring life, you are sent to a place of reward. Now in this scenario, wouldn't you feel really stupid that you chose to live a bad life just because you didn't know that you were going to be judged? This would mean that only those who lived good lives despite seemingly no reward would be rewarded, and those who lived bad lives because there seemed to be no punishment would be punished. I feel as though this would be an interesting and seemingly fair way of being judged. Now some of you creative people might have thought of a rebuttal to this, and that's what if the afterlife is a place that rewards bad behavior and punishes good behavior. The truth is that this is possible. Just as we can speculate about the afterlife being a place of nothingness or all the other various theories, my answer to this may not satisfy everyone, but I'll say it anyways. In life, we are taught right from wrong, meaning it's subjective. This is why a lot of people make arguments that true universal morals could only exist within religion. And of course, the rebuttal to this is as a species, we do these behaviors because it benefits us, which basically means the moral compasses we have are really just selfish. Which is why I believe, or I guess I choose to believe, that this isn't true, because I've felt great kindness from others that came with no benefit to them, and I've done great kindnesses for others that didn't provide reward for me. It just feels like there's a rough, objective moral compass that guides us all. Maybe this is naive, and people including myself only do kind things because it makes us feel good, and an objective moral compass doesn't actually Actually exists and is only a concept of the society you live in. Truthfully, I don't know if there are people who kill because that's what feels right to them. I would say that something has gone wrong in their mind making them mentally ill, but perhaps there are those who are truly sound of mind who do terrible things because it feels like the right thing to do, and there isn't a sense of an objective moral compass pulling them away. And to all of this, I say it's stupid and I disagree. If there's a god that supports doing activities that feel wrong, then I refuse, even if that means I'm the one who is wrong on the cosmic scale. Because this is all I know and this is who I am. This is how I feel and see life. Unless you can convince me as to why I had it all wrong or my moral compass was backwards, I'll oppose you. Answer 3. Standard religion slash spirituality. I left this till the end because it's obviously an important aspect to acknowledge for the video, but it's also on the more vanilla side of things, and I don't really have much insight to offer besides my two cents. But of course many of us find purpose through religion or spiritual beliefs. There's some of the big ones like Christianity, Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, and lots more of smaller sizes. You can follow whichever you want. I would say follow the one that you find the most evidence in, or feel the best about. Don't let your family members decide where your faith should lie and I would always encourage you to learn about all the various religions in your search for truth. Also because it can just be fun. I personally identify as a Christian who is in a bit of a questioning phase as I hope to read and learn more, but I also hope to learn about the other big religions as well at some point in my life. Religion is a very hot topic, which is why I try to be respectful to those with religious views, but also to those who don't want to have religion shoved down their throats. And if you choose to share your thoughts on religion in the comments, I ask that you do so respectfully. Religion inherently assigns you with a sense of purpose, at least I know most do, whether that's spreading the gospel, reaching enlightenment, living ethical lives, which is why I felt it had to be part of this video. Religion, whether it's right or wrong, can still be a great place of community and usually involves adopting good behaviors, though it has other benefits beyond a possible godly gift. Lastly, I just want to acknowledge that religion has also hurt a lot of people as well, and although we could debate whether or not it was actually due to the religious teachings or the individual groups of evil people, I will say that I would never support such behaviors and heavily advise that you make educated decisions on which faiths you choose to follow. And always be honest with yourself if things don't feel right. Whether you believe in living for the moment, non-standard religion slash spirituality, or standard religion slash spirituality, I think we can all agree that at the end of the day we seem to benefit from doing good. Whether it's because it feels right or we may be rewarded for it or punished for not, we all benefit when we are good to each other, or at least decent. I hope this video was able to help some of you. If you want to talk to me, I respond to all the comments and besides that, take care.